Okay, so <clears throat> it's time to just compare this to the blue Pelicost that I had. Unfortunately, I don't have it anymore and I have one picture of it and it's not even a good picture. Um, so apologies for that. It is just going to be uh, looking at this and then me just giving my views. Um, I will split the video up into looks, which again uh, is very personal and subjective. Um, just because I like something doesn't mean you have the same view. Uh, comfort and features and then uh, my conclusion. Um, for the looks, we'll just talk about the Pelagos uh, 42, then the 39. Comfort and features, I'll mash it all together and then I'll just draw um, a conclusion. So I deliberately, when I bought the Pedagos Blue, I deliberately wanted a blue watch. Um, I deliberately wanted something that was all brushed, that was very sporty. Um, I knew what I was buying. I was under no illusion this would be a watch I could wear, I'd be wearing it and do everything in. Um, I knew it was also a fairly big watch. Um, but I, I, I was and still am kind of learning what, what my preferences are and uh, I thought that was what I wanted. Um, I did really like it um, for some of the short time I had it. Um, I really liked the blue. It was very bright. It was brighter than I envisaged. And I think actually the 58 more subdued blue was a far nicer blue to have on a watch. But I did really like the blue on the um, on the Pelagos. Uh, I enjoyed the uh, the look of it. I, I really liked the dial. I liked the cutout um, chapter ring, which this one doesn't have. Um, other than that, that, they are really quite similar watches. So that's obviously one of the reasons I like this watch so much. So I did really like the aesthetic of the watch. Uh, the, the Pelagos 42 did wear very big. It was obviously 42 millimetres in diameter. It was 22 millimetre lugs, um, uh, sorry, between the lugs. And then it was a 14.2, 14.3 millimetres thick. So the thickness and the 22 millimetre lug width are what really put me off it um, in terms of size. Uh, also, it wasn't as, it was light, but it wasn't as light as you would think because the case back and the clasp was actually stainless steel. Um, for me, if you're going to make a titanium watch, either make it all titanium or make it all steel. Having a blend was a bit odd. Um, so it didn't, it, it wore big, even for my wrists. I could take it on my wrist, a seven inch wrist, it was fine, but it wore too big for my personal taste, especially the thickness. And as I say, the um, lug to lug, it was, it just made the watch feel quite, really quite substantial and quite large. Um, after a while also, I realised that I really didn't want something that was that tall. I, I don't have a lot of watches at the moment. I've got three nice watches that I move to four next year. Um, but I just, I couldn't wear it as much as I wanted. I wouldn't wear it out for dinners for sure with, with my wife when we went on date nights. I certainly wouldn't be wearing it to weddings. I did wear it to the office, no problem. Uh, it doesn't go with a suit. I tried. Um, it just, it was too one dimensional in the end. For me from a looks perspective uh, it is a proper tool wash right uh, helium escape valve um really good depth rating um the crazy looking clasp that was completely exposed a mechanism it had a purpose as i say i knew what i was buying but for me it just didn't work out in the end i'm just gonna make sure i covered it oh yes on the other point the clasp on it so in theory, I thought the clasp was going to be perfect and I'll be able to get the perfect fit. But when you take away the spring-loaded adjustment, you're back down to the three micro adjustment slots that you have on all the other Tudor watches. And I've always had a problem with that on the GMT, on the Pelagos, on the 58s. Um, those three adjustment slots are just not enough. And when you move the original one onto the spring-loaded um, adjustment position, the springs are tight, right? They're, they're, they are, they're not like... Um, uh, very forgiving springs so you have to have it over a wetsuit which is obviously what it's designed for because if you put it on your wrist it just cuts into your wrist so i could not get a good fit on that watch and that surprised me and it irritated me um so i think that's probably it just in terms of running through that watch and and what my thoughts were on it there's no denying it's an extraordinarily capable watch but for me it just wasn't right when this was released, it had all of the positives of the Pelagos in terms of the modern aesthetic, uh, it being titanium, so it was going to be light, but this is fully titanium. Um, for me, a, a better clasp with a micro, with five micro adjustments of two millimeter increments, I can get the absolute perfect fit on this. As everyone knows, 12 millimeters thick, 47 millimeters lug to lug, 21 millimeters between the lugs. 
Um, I've missed something, have I? Oh yeah, 40 millimeter, 39, 40 millimeter diameter because of the way the um, bezel overhangs the side of the case. Uh, so it was the stuff I liked from the Pelagos and then it took away all the stuff I didn't like from the Pelagos. The only thing it has that I didn't like from the Pelagos is the diver's extension, which I, I still think is redundant on this watch. Um, I can't see many, if any, people using it. Uh, other than that, it kept all the good things I like about the original Pelagos. Um, I just turned it up. Uh, I will put in the shots of the bezel in case you're watching this video and you haven't seen my other ones. Um, it's far more versatile by three key changes. Three key changes make this more versatile watch and make it a keeper for me. Well, actually four. Size, one, which is the biggest one of all. The change to the bezel, the change to the uh, dial, and just making it less tooly. And when I say making it less tooly, that is this far more uh, modern, uh, well, actually the other one looked really modern as well, more refined looking clasp, getting rid of the helium escape valve, um, and again, that, that would come into the size of it as well, I guess. So those changes make this for me almost, almost a perfect watch. I will wear this out on date nights. So I will wear it to Wednesday. I've got no issues with that now because of those changes. Um, the only things that I think don't work quite as well on this watch are, I've mentioned it in all my other videos, but the loom plots are too small. They need to be bigger to fill the dial more. Um, and again, as I say, the diver's extension, but the diver's extension, you don't, even, you don't even see it when you turn the watch around, look, it's not even there. So that's not a problem. Um, so for me, this is everything I liked about the Pelagos and then all the stuff I didn't need or didn't like is taken away. Um, obviously, if you're going to go diving, actually go diving, the Pelagos original one is obviously the better bet. It is a more capable watch. It is a proper tool watch. Uh, it has diver's extensions both of them have the rubber straps so that's cool but the original pelagos is a one-dimensional go diving with it tool watch that's it if you've got lots of watches or you actually go diving it's perfect beyond that for me it, it, it for me it didn't really work this watch works in far more situations right where else are we looking at? Uh, do I want to keep talking about So the bezel, as I've mentioned, just in case this is the only video of mine you're seeing, it's not really black. It's more of a grey. I will put in a macro shot. Well, it's not a macro shot. It's a shot through a loop of the uh, dial so you can see the red text a bit better. And also so you can see, which you can't hear, the sunburst effect on the, uh, on the dial. So in terms of comfort and features, um, Comfort wise, as I've mentioned, and as you'd expect, this is the more comfortable watch for me. Um, for all the reasons I've already mentioned, it's all titanium, it's lighter than the original, uh, the clasp is better, allowing me to get a better fit. I've already talked about the issues I had with the um, original Pelagos clasp. Um, so yeah, this this is a, a far more comfortable uh, watch uh, for me, um, and I'd imagine for most other people out there as well. Um, Feature-wise, they're pretty similar, right? They've both got COSC certified movements. One obviously has a date. Um, they both have uh, the same amazing uh, quality bezel uh, with that amazing bezel action. Yeah. And the extra indent at 12 o'clock, so you know where it is without looking. Um, they both have incredible loom with loom on the bezel and so on. Obviously, where the original Pelagos trumps it, it has the helium escape valve, which great if you use it. You can go saturation diving. It has the spring-loaded diver's extension, which would genuinely be useful for people putting on on over wetsuits or uh, anything else that they've got. And obviously, it has a bit, uh, deeper depth rating. So it is the more capable watch. You, you can't get around that. It is, right? That's what it's designed to be. Um... So what conclusion do I come to with this one? I think I come to the conclusion that this is the watch I've got with me, right? So I don't have, as I said before, I don't have a very big collection. Um, I much prefer the more usability and daily wearability of this watch. I much prefer the modern um, kind of uh, more blingy, even though it's not blingy, it's more blingy than the original Pelagos. 
Um, I like the fact they've taken away all of the, for me, superfluous bits on the Pelagos that make it a watch it is. Um, and as I mentioned before, this should never have been called a Pelagos. I, I genuinely think it should have been another line uh, with Tudor. So you've got your proper professional Pelagos watches. You've got your uh, kind of like Black Bay 58 kind of vintage inspired watches. And then you've got your more everyday something else name watches that you can then build out this green dials, blue dials, whatever you want, dates. Um, that's what I think they should have done. And I think that would have cleared up all this confusion that people have around. Oh, why, why is it missing all that? It's not it's not really a Pelagos. So, yeah, that, that's my thoughts on it. I'm, I'm super happy with this. Um, also, I didn't mention yet that with my original Pelagos, I had the bezel seized twice and I had loom fall out of the um, ba -ba 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 bezel. So I didn't have the great experience of that watch. And I'm very much hoping for a better experience with this watch. Um, hopefully this has helped some people but as always if you're not sure try them on they are very different even if you're looking at the black one or the left hand dive um my preference of all of those is actually the left hand dive probably or maybe the black the black does look good um but yeah try them on they're very different watches they wear differently they're for different um circumstances and situations think about the collection you've got how it would fit potentially they're very different if you're just you've got a small collection really small collection i, I would choose this so yeah, uh, they are my thoughts. Any questions? Let me know.